Father, we thank you tonight. We pray that your power and your glory and your presence will fill this place. Lord, we just want to come and meet with you. We want to come and worship you. Glorify your name. Fill this house with your glory and your presence. All I want is to be with you. Hallelujah. Okay, let's put our hands together. Into your presence we come. Into your presence we come.
your face, oh God. And all I need, my God, all I need is your grace. Tonight, you may have never felt this awesome presence. I tell you, the glory of God is here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm excited because we're starting a new church here in two weeks' time. So don't come next Sunday. Two weeks' time, the 8th, Sunday the 8th at 2 p.m. Every Sunday, we're going to be gathered here. We're just going to be worshiping the Lord. And we're going to share His Word. <coughs> teach his word and we're just going to come and worship at his footstool his presence is going to fall so get the word out and invite your neighbors your friends and and come and i tell you what i'm tired of fooling around it's time to to mean business it's time to get committed it's time to to change our lifestyle it's time to change the purpose what we live for and what we chase after what we desire too many christians are just are just like the world they're just living for money. They're living for possessions. They're living for prestige, for power, position. They never get enough. Heaven never have enough. Let's put it all aside. That's why Jesus said how difficult it is for the rich to enter the kingdom. Because he knows once you chase after these things, it's what's going to take the throne in your heart. The things of this world, the pleasures, the passions, the lusts. But he says you must die. If you want to follow me, you've got to pay the price. You've got to count the cost. You've got to take up your cross. Put everything else aside. Leave it all behind. It's all rubbish anyway. You can't take it with you. It's worth nothing. At the end of the day, it'll all burn. And only that which lasts through the fire is pure gold. Pure gold and pure silver refined by the fiery flames. Amen. That is why God tests us in our life. He tempts us. He may put riches in front of you. If you chase them, you've just lost it. It'll consume you, I tell you. You've got to put it all aside. Deny ourselves. Take up our cross and follow Him. That. See, if you, if you search, if you seek to find your own life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for His sake, and in his name, for his purpose, for his kingdom come, his will be done on earth, in you, as it is right now in heaven. And he will give you this day your daily bread. And he knows your needs, requirements. And if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be provided and given up to you. To take no thought of tomorrow, he says. The birds of the air are fed. The flowers of the field are clothed. They don't toil, they don't work hard, they don't stress. And, uh, try and make it happen. No, it just happens because your heavenly Father knows their needs and provides for them. So also your heavenly Father loves you and longs to provide for you. But he can't sometimes because we run ahead of him. 
and we look unto others to provide and he's saying what about me you have no idea what you've missed out on you're sick you you you're you're getting second best you're settling for second third fourth fifth best but i have so much more for you if you only trust me if you only surrender unto me hallelujah i'm preaching now <laughs> hallelujah i tell you what i think I love his presence. I love the glory of God. It's here right now. I could probably preach for two or three hours. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 61. Listen to this. This is the words of Jesus. You know, Jesus was sent by heaven, sent from heaven, hallelujah, to earth to bring the word of the Lord to bring the promise of the Father, to bring healing, to bring freedom, to bring deliverance, to bring salvation. And he stood in the temple and he opened the books of Isaiah and he read from chapter 61. It says this, For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the good news unto the meek and to the humble. He has said, you know why the humble? Because the proud cannot receive the word of the Lord. Proverbs says it is the pride, uh, you know, comes before a fall, before destruction. And the proud cannot receive the grace of God. It is only the humble that can receive the grace of God. And that's important to understand that because the scripture tells us it's by his grace that we are saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell safe from damnation and you say oh hell's not real yes it is jesus preached on hell more than any other topic in the bible because he came to warn us that there is a broad road that leads to destruction and many and most walk in it and um, many walk in it and uh, but there is a straight and a narrow road that uh, leads unto eternal life and there are few that find it and he came to pave the way. He came uh, with a message from God that says, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. Now, this world will tell you there's many ways, many religions, many paths that lead to Rome. No, there's not. According to the word of God, there's only one way. There is one way. There is one name. There is one authority. There is one God, the great I am, God of Abraham, Isaac, the God Jehovah. Who sent his son to pay the price for our sin? Mm. See, he was punished. He was crucified. He bore the punishment for us and for our sin that we might be free, that we might be set free from the penalty and the outcome and the consequences of our sin, that we now have free access into the presence of God. Hallelujah. See, in the beginning, God made Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden. And every day, he came and walked with them in the cool of the evening. Can you imagine that? Every day, God Almighty, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God who placed the sun, the moon, and the sea, the stars in the sky. Hallelujah. And this God who is robed in glory and in power and, and, and clothed in majesty, the God that inhabits eternity unto eternity. Who just speaks the word and creation, miracles come to place. This same God came down from heaven in the cool of the evening and walked and talked with Adam and with Eve. And then sin happened. What is sin? Sin is simply disobey God. That is sin. And when we disobey God, we turn our backs upon Him and we walk after the desires of our heart, of the, after the things of this world. And we become lost. For we all like sheep have gone astray and each one unto his own way. But God has placed on Him, Jesus, the punishment for our sin that whoever hears and believes and turns from their sin in repentance 
and in sorrowfulness of heart, changing their mind and their understanding and their concept of life and turns from their sin to obedience unto God the Father through His Son Jesus. These shall be saved. Is that good news tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. And Jesus rose and declared, For the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord God hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the humble, unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up, to heal the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted here tonight? See, God knows your every need. There's different people here tonight. We, have different, we live different lives. We have different backgrounds, circumstances we're facing. But God knows everything that you've faced, everything you've been through, everything you're going through now, everything you will face in the future. And God says, I come to bind up broken hearts, to heal the brokenhearted, and to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if something has you in bondage. I wonder if something has control of you. Is there habits? Is there fear? Is there sickness? Is there anxiety? Tonight, there's freedom in the name of Jesus. Tonight, there is liberty. Tonight, there is healing for broken hearts. Tonight, the prison doors are opened. Tonight he reaches down from heaven and lifts us up from the miry clay that we've become stuck in. He opens the prison doors and takes us from darkness into light.
each and every day of my life. The word of God says he will not strive with mankind forever. He destroyed it once in Noah's day. He regretted that he ever made man because they wandered so far and they became so depraved in their understanding and their actions and their lifestyle, so perverse and self-centered and proud. He regretted that he'd ever made man. God says so it will be the same in the last days and I believe right now we are living in the very last few seconds of eternity, of the life of this world, I should say before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they will come upon the face of this earth such heartache and sorrow and the wrath of God will be we poured out to judge the sinners for a period of seven years. And then he will come and set up his kingdom according to scripture for a thousand years on this earth. He will reign and we will reign with him. Listen, if you are faithful to him in the small things right now and he tests you in these things, if you are faithful with, with that which you have in your hands right now. Don't hang on to it and possess these things, but give everything for the sake of the gospel and for those that are in need and to love thy neighbor. And love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and your strength and to love thy neighbor. If you prove faithful in these things, then he shall put you in charge of nations and kingdoms. We need to take our eyes off the temple and put it on eternity. For this life will not last, but eternity will. Jesus says, if you stand up for me now, right now, in this life, listen, though everyone else stand against you because you stand for him, then great is your reward. Hallelujah. Great is your reward. Hallelujah. This is God to declare his favor and his love and to declare his wrath and his vengeance on mankind those that reject the message yes we know for God so loved the world he gave his only son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish listen for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world why he came to save it why? Because he stands condemned. If we reject Jesus, we remain in our sin. Therefore, we stand condemned. We must yield. We must surrender. We must believe. And I tell you what, it's not a sacrifice. It's pure joy. And it is a privilege. It's been men and women die for good causes in the past. There's been knights that have died for their king. So much more than the kings and the king of kings and the king of kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came to comfort all that mourn, to comfort all, give strength to all others. He gave an invitation come unto me, though all you who are tired, all those who are weary, all those that are thirsty. Come and drink of the living water and you will never thirst again. Listen, there is a, a river of God that flows from the very throne room of heaven. Living water. He says, come and drink. And he will satisfy the greatest yearning and the innermost desires of our heart. And he will flood you with pure joy, with peace and with love. Sure, there will be hard times in this world. But listen, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And listen, if we share in his sufferings, then we shall also share in his resurrection and we shall share in his glory. Paul says, oh, that I might know him, that I might know him more, and that I might share in his sufferings, that I might also share in his glory. Hallelujah. That's the promise of God. To appoint unto those who mourn, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy 
for the spirit from for mourning the sadness the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness you know sometimes I look out and those that I'm sharing the word with and I see some that are, are just entering in they just they're like sponges they're sucking up the presence of God they're, they're receiving the word they're like soil that have has been taken unto by a plow and turned over and prepared and the rains that come down from heaven just soak in and other hearts are like concrete that as the rains come it just hits and runs straight off like a sheet of water and has no impact but God says listen it's time it is time so that poster over there it is time to get right with God it is time to break up the unplowed ground to break up to search your hearts to break up their hardened ground and to seek the Lord until He comes and showers His glory upon us like rains that come down from heaven and water the earth and bring forth its fruit. So also is the Word of God that comes and brings forth His glory and softens your heart and brings forth a mighty harvest of righteousness. This is the Word of God to come to refresh, to rejuvenate, to bring rebirth, to bring you into a new creation. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I see others sitting there and they're, uh, you know, they just, some people don't even make good decisions to get out of it. Listen, the, the invitation is this. If we draw nigh to God, if we, if we reach out to God, if we search for Him with all our hearts, we will find Him. If we draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh, draw close unto you. You see, well, who draws first? You do. <laughs> well, not really. He's already come. You know, He's done everything within His power. And now He's standing saying, won't you come? Come, come. Come, 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 and drink of the living water, and then you'll never thirst again. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Isaiah 61 verse 4, They shall build the old wastes and rise up the former desolations. Listen, you say that God can't use me. You don't know my past. You don't know the heartache. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've been affected. No, but God does. And it makes no difference to him. He's able to come and heal and mend. That's the greatest miracle I see, I tell you. When God picks up a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, that, that has no hope, that has no future, that in this world, in this life, has nothing great and is seen to nothing fantastic, but he comes and opens their hearts and pours out his great love and his joy and his peace and places in their heart a purpose and a hunger and thirst after righteousness and then he takes this vessel and molds it into something that is pure and righteous and used for great works and fills it with his glory fill my cup Lord I lift it up Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Pressed down, shaken together, running out all over. That's what God wants to do for you. We shall rise up and bring healing. That which has been destroyed. Listen, the blessing of the latter days is greater than the former. There's much more God has for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And let me read verse 10 to you. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my, my God. 
My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness. For as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves you. He desires to use you. If you will yield, if you to serve Him and surrender unto Him, He will pick you up. He'll dust you off. <laughs> He'll wash you clean. And He'll fill you with His glory, with His presence. I'd like to invite you tonight just to close your eyes. Open your hearts to God right now. As I sing these simple words, it says, Lord, please take my heart and mold me into your plan. I long for you to guide me, to lead me by your hand. My God, I never want to be found without you. I never want to go in on my own. And I'll love you when I'm up and I'll trust you when I'm down. Hallelujah. Reach out as I sing it. Open your heart. Make it your prayer tonight.
thank you for knocking on my door. I thank you for loving me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. All I can do is thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to glorify your name tonight. I thank you, Lord, for caring for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my God, I give you praise, Lord, if you're standing tonight, you know, there's no magic prayer or some prayer book we get out right now and quote, no, it's just a simple prayer from the, a prayer of truth from the depths of your heart that God hears, <laughs> you know, Jesus, when he walked this earth, there were the, the, the priests and the the religious leaders of the day and they stand on the corners of the streets and they'd have the Bible and they'd be reading and prayer books and praying and reading out loud these impressive, memorized prayers. Jesus said, see that God doesn't even hear a word they say. But when someone falls on their knees in their hearts, <laughs> as you are right now, though you're standing, you're on your knees before God. Prayer, a simple prayer in childlike faith is spoken. Something like, Lord, save me. Lord, heal me. Lord, forgive me. Why don't you say that right now? And He will heal you. And He will save you. And He will forgive you. Surrender to Him. sing a simple song like this because he lives just close your eyes and worship I confess tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone thank you Lord
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song as I, as I sing. Then you come. Hallelujah.